Okay, we're back for the final part three. Thank you for doing this, Armor. I have been working with your campaign since June and it's been a great experience. Most of the people who I try to convert to the libertarian cause, however, have asked me the following question or something similar about the fair tax plan. It sounds great on paper, but I am curious as to how you would enact it without loopholes and corruption on Capitol Hill. It seems like interest groups and lobbyists would render such a plan impossible to enact purely. Surely you can't tax food at the same rate as tobacco, agriculture corporations might say for example. As president, would you have any way to combat these? interest groups who would seek to make the fair tax system just as corrupt as today's. It seems that your election would result in little more than gridlock. Also, would you make an effort to minimize political rhetoric even after being put on the big stage, or would you spew the same? We love America. This is for America. B.S. that Washington is currently infested. With? If not, how would you get a bigger voting base? Some people have argued with me that you would just turn into another empty rhetoric. Loving politician as soon as your voting base got large enough to demand it. I will not succumb to the BS, and Fair Tax really does cover all of these issues. Check it out. www.fairtax.org Serious question. Do you like waffles or pancakes? Waffles, of course. What are your favorite hobbies? What are your favorite books slash movies? Who is your greatest inspiration? How stressful is campaigning for the presidential election? Favorite hobbies, I'm an extreme outdoor guy. Favorite books, Fountainhead and Resurrection by Leo Tolstoy. I am an avid movie guy. I watch all movies. If I found this to be stressful, I wouldn't be doing it. What's your opinion on the spoiler slash nader effect? Are you worried about it happening this election? A wasted vote is voting for someone that you don't believe in. If Obama or Romney are spoiled, they have themselves to blame. There are four candidates receiving matching FEC funds paid for by our taxes, Johnson, Obama, Romney, and Steen. The Commission on Presidential Debates has a literal monopoly on the presidential debates. With the debates widely thought to be the most influential aspect of a campaign, some have said that in order to have a chance at winning the election, you must be allowed to participate in the debates. The CPD makes up their own arbitrary debates rules which seem to be intentionally exclusionary, while at the same time maintaining the facade that they are a non-partisan organization whose main goal is to provide the best information possible regarding debates, stating that the debates belong to the people. The fact of the matter is, providing the best information possible is simply not possible without inviting every candidate who has a mathematical chance of winning to the debates. Therefore the CPD cannot accomplish their mission statement without inviting you. There are organizations such as Open Debate and Help the CPD who are heavily petitioning the CPD to invite all candidates who have a mathematical chance at winning and cities an outrage over exclusionary the debate practices by the CPD may never have been higher. My question, what are the most effective methods for your supporters to help you get an invite to the debates? There is a lot of talk that the CPD needs to be replaced with a non-bias entity, do you? Agree with this and how do you believe this be achieved? The most effective thing that anyone can do is to go out and sell your immediate family, 
friends, and co-workers to the fact that there is a legitimate third choice. Perhaps the only choice. What is your plan to be included into the national debate scene? And do you think that would show some legitimacy for your campaign to those who may still not be familiar with you? Good luck you have my vote. We are just going to keep plugging. Governor Johnson, my question is quite simple. What is the game plan for Michigan? Currently you are not on the ballot. Last answer. Thank you all very much. We have litigation in Michigan. That we believe will prevail. Thanks, group of symbols, to everybody. Taking a step away from politics for a second, I would just like to congratulate you on summiting Everest. That is quite a feat. Keep being her. Boss Gary. Thanks. Mr. Johnson. With the fiscal cliff set to approach if nothing is done, what is your plan to avoid it if you think it needs avoiding? How will this plan help the American economy? Balancing the federal budget now is the only way we have a fighting chance. If elected, what would you do about welfare? As a libertarian, I know you're against it, so would you flat out remove it, or slowly dismantle it? And thank you for coming back. As the libertarian candidate, I am the only one talking about lowering welfare spending and warfare spending in the same sentence. I'm looking to reform welfare that we would not spend more money than we take in to accomplish it. Mr. Johnson, thanks so much for doing this. To me and my friends who support you, it seems that your biggest problem at least in our area, is that people just don't know who you are. Everyone that we have told about you has gotten on board is very excited about your views. We want to increase our area's awareness about you, and we wanted it right to hold a rally at our local college. What would be the best way to make this happen? Blogging and social media. Send everyone to www.garajohnson2012.com. I will be voting for you, sir. You are my ideal president. Thank you. Dear Governor Johnson, I wanted to ask you a question similar to one asked of President Obama. I am a law student at a top law school and will be absolutely swamped with debt from student loans upon graduation. Unfortunately, in today's economic climate I am encountering extreme difficulty finding her job. How would you work with Congress to improve today's economic climate and job market? Thank you. I think that adopting the fair tax will reboot the American economy, and that the private sector will create tens of millions of jobs with a zero corporate tax rate environment. Governor Johnson, I have no question for you. I just want to say thank you. You're awesome. Thank you. Do you still believe that no crimes were committed in the lead up to the 2008 economic collapse? Crimes were definitely committed in the lead up to the 2008 collapse and aftermath, edit, unfortunately, that's all the time I have today. I'll try to answer more questions later if I find some time. Thank you. All for your great questions. I tried to answer more than 10 unlike another presidential candidate. Don't forget to vote in November. Our liberty depends on it.